This week in Jamaica now, brace for higher light bills, JPS gets go-ahead to increase charges. Claims and counterclaims, the JTA and the Ministry of Education at odds over teacher migration crisis. Everybody is trying to use the poor to win a political argument. On the attack, Prime Minister Holness takes on the PNP over NHT subsidies change. And where is Tanto Blacks? The police are searching for the entertainer to answer to fraud allegations. I'm Jovan Johnson and this is Jamaica Now. Jamaicans will shortly be hit with an average increase in electricity bills of 0.7%. The Office of Utilities Regulation, OUR, announced its approval of the new rate on Tuesday, the day the change took effect. The 0.7% increase applies to residential customers. Commercial customers will see increases ranging from 0.4% to 1.2%. The OUR said the Jamaica Public Service Company, JPS, sought an average rate hike of 2%. The state regulator said JPS's request for an increase was in keeping with the provisions of the 2016 electricity license. The license allows for the realignment of the company's revenue targets each year against inflation and exchange rate movements, as well as its performance in the previous year. Opposition leader Mark Golding criticized the move, saying there should be no increases given the rising cost of living. He repeated his call for a removal of the special tax on fuel. And Prime Minister Andrew Holness has accused the opposition People's National Party of trying to use the poor to win a political argument. Mr. Holness was on the attack most of the week, defending his administration against changes to policies at the National Housing Trust, NHT. Mr. Holness announced in March that the interest rate subsidies provided to groups such as public sector workers, persons with disabilities and those over 55 years old would be discontinued. A person's income will now be the sole determinant of whether a subsidy is applied. The NHT, a government mortgage agency, implemented the decision in August. The Mark Golding-led PNP has accused the government of being callous. Mr. Holness argued, however, that the new policy would not affect low-income earners. He added that the subsidy policy must be looked at in tandem with reductions in the interest rates for various groups. It's a battle for narratives, battle for your mind. And this battle is being fought on a political platform, which I call the politics of it. Everybody is trying to use the poor to win a political argument. That is the real gist of all of this. Saying that I am here supporting the poor, oh, I am supporting the poor. But the things that are really necessary to improve the life of the poor gets clouded. clouded, deliberately obfuscated to sometimes downright lies. Director of the Portmore Self-Help Disability Organization, Cleon Porter, said no consultations were held with his 300 members and the announcement came as a surprise. There were claims and counterclaims this week involving the Jamaica Teachers Association, JTA, and the Education Ministry over the number of teachers leaving the classroom for lucrative overseas jobs. It's all happening as the September 5 start of the new school year looms. Education Minister Favel Williams has insisted that the number leaving is not alarming. Since July, 167 teachers have resigned. She also said that 964 newly trained teachers are available to the system. Mrs. Williams also outlined a series of measures the government is pursuing to ensure students have teachers come September. We've looked at the voluntary relocation program. Uh, during last year and, and probably the year before, we have been rationalizing our junior high school, the junior high section of the primary and junior high school. So we would have had a number of specialist teachers who would have been retained and are currently deployed in our primary schools as generalist teachers. These teachers have been permanently employed and some have been appointed as senior teachers. We do have teachers coming in under the Jamaica-Cuban bilateral program. We also are calling on schools to increase the use of information and communication technology. Uh, flipped classrooms where teachers are well aware the student will start their lessons at home, finish it in the classroom. To use videotaping of lessons, televised learning, etc., that allow for the reuse of asynchronous experiences which may be monitored with the assistance of student leaders. But the JTA has hit back, arguing that the number is higher. 
The association's new president, Lasonia Harrison, says the organization's analysis showed that 600 teachers will not be returning to the classroom. According to the data, 13% of the teachers who are leaving are retired, 43% are resigning, and 44% are on approved leave. Our leaders have posited consistently that there is no need for alarm concerning teacher migration. <laughs> we know that teacher migration has been a feature of our system perhaps forever. However, there seems to be an unusual number this time around added to it being a global phenomenon. Meanwhile, the education minister has upset some stakeholders with her announcement that the ministry will work with teachers to invest their money so they can have multiple streams of income. I want you to be so successful in your financial affairs that when recruiters come calling, you say, wait a minute, I have my house already. I have my cars, maybe two or three. I have my church family, I have my community, I have my insurance plans, I have my financial portfolio, I know my risk tolerance, I know my time horizon, and I have my Lord and Savior, through whom all things are possible. Right? So teachers, this is something that I would like to do for teachers to ensure that you are empowered with this knowledge, this financial knowledge to help you. Jamaica Labour Party councillor for the Olympic Gardens Division in St. Andrew, Christopher Townsend, pleaded not guilty to several fraud-related charges in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court this week. A co-accused, Bruce Stone from St. Catherine, has pleaded guilty. It's alleged that Mr. Townsend, who owns a fleet of buses, forged a series of documents including a road license, motor vehicle fitness and registration documents, and gave them to Mr. Bruce, who owns a blue and white Toyota Coaster minibus. The men, who are each out on $100,000 bail, are to return to court on December 12. An RGR Gleaner commissioned Don Anderson poll has found that four out of every five Jamaicans, or 80% of the population, want buggery to remain a criminal offence, while 12% believe it should be decriminalised. The remaining 8% of respondents were unsure of their position on the matter. Though the buggery law does not explicitly target gay men, it effectively prohibits sexual relations among that minority. Co-chair of the Caribbean Centre for Human Rights, Dr. Carolyn Gomes, has described the poll results as unfortunate finding that reflects the need for more public education on the removal of the 1860s British colonial law. Moravian pastor the Reverend Charmaine Daly disagrees that sex between consenting adult men in their private domain should be criminalized. She argues that abuse or attacks can be adequately circumscribed under other laws. Tragedy struck in the Vanzeland community of Falmouth, Trelawney this week when a pack of dogs allegedly fatally attacked a 73-year-old woman. The animals reportedly jumped the wall of their owner's property. The woman, who was physically challenged and walked with the assistance of a stroller, was identified by relatives as Kathleen Jump, a resident of Vanzeland. The police say the woman's body was found with clothes partially ripped off, lying in a pool of blood on the roadway. The body had several deep wounds. The police say it is suspected that the dogs mauled Miss Jump. Dancehall artiste Tanto Blacks is wanted by police from the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigations Branch to answer to fraud-related charges. His co-accused, entertainer Omar Porambosa Johnson, pleaded guilty to conspiracy to defraud, uttering forged documents and obtaining money by means of false pretense. But the entertainer, who won the Magnum Kings and Queens of Dancehall competition in 2009, pleaded not guilty to the charge of forgery. The allegations arose out of an incident in May in which the two men were accused of giving $250 US to a man to change into Jamaican dollars. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at online feedback at gleanerjm.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. Like this video on our YouTube page, turn on your notification and subscribe today. I'm Jovan Johnson and before we go, more from New Jamaica Teachers Association President Lasonia Harrison in her inaugural address. Aside from our negotiated benefits,
in phase, as outlined in the code, regarding vacation leave facilities. One of the reasons postulated by the government in our last reclassification, why we are not paid 100% of market, is our non-contact time with students. However, I quickly calculated this and came up with a total of 64 days, which amounts to approximately 9.4. Week, 9.14 weeks, not 13 shared in an expose. Uh -huh. okay. I therefore humbly suggest right. that time away from students and them from us is quite mutually beneficial. Yes. <laughs> but just ask anyone with a working knowledge of this system, and if you don't know such a one, Ask any teacher worthy of every penny and more currently paid to him or her. How many of those days are spent resting and staying at home with our family? Teachers use this time to formulate assessment, mark paper, finalize reports, and complete just a question. Just a question. How many persons are we currently paying in the post of permanent secretary of the Ministry of Education?